Hey everyone, I finally recovered from my surgery and I'm coming back with more videos. I promise I'm gonna cover everything. Weird, but I promise I'm gonna cover everything that's happening with Star Wars, The Bad Batch, you know, all the, all the trailer for the new announcement of Tales of the Empire, which looks really interesting. But this video is gonna be chapter two of Sensitive, a Star Wars fan fiction by yours truly. I hope you guys enjoy it. I know you guys like the first one, so hopefully that continues. Chapter 2 Imagine The night had finally come. It was a few days before the ceremony, and AZ had already pretended to be sicker than someone with the brain rot plague and no back to tank. Anytime the children got sick, the headmaster would tell them to go into their rooms and lock the door. She would never check on them, because they believed she didn't want to get sick herself, as cruel as it was, and regardless of the sickness or how contagious it was. She would have Kaz sit with AZ in his room when he was sick, so she could take care of him. Part of her believed that this is why they had gotten so close over the past five years that she could remember. Well, that and the fact they were both force-sensitive. When AZ was sent to his room, he stumbled in with a coughing fit, pretending to pass out on his bed. Make sure he doesn't get whatever he has all over the orphanage. The last thing I need is some sickness spreading to all the other children, the headmaster said with a disgusted look and a slight attitude. Kaz knew she didn't really care about the other children. At this level, you took any work you could get. The headmaster may not have wanted the job, but it was better than dancing on this level. At least, that was what the headmaster told her once. After telling Kaz her only hope was to become a dancer, when she was older, of course. Yes, ma'am, Kaz replied after she shut the door to the bedroom. She could hear the headmaster lock the door from the other side. The doors in the orphanage only locked from the outside and had a slit in the doors that was just large enough to fit a tray onto a platform and through. Sometimes, the mechanism would push the tray into the room too fast, launching the food forwards and onto the ground. That was the worst, because the headmaster never gave you a new tray, because it was out of the budget. The night unfolded just as they had planned. AZ's feigned illness had granted them the opportunity to escape the monotony of the orphanage and embark on a mission that hold the promise of a brighter future. Kaz, though hesitant, understood the gravity of their endeavor. The mechanical slit in the door served as a constant reminder of the oppressive nature of their surroundings. Once assured of the headmaster's departure, AZ, with a mischievous grin, acknowledged Kaz. Hehe, <laughs> yes, she is gone. Kaz giggled in response. AZ's fake illness had granted them the freedom to execute their plan. A plan that held the promise of stolen lightsabers and a journey to the surface. Thank the Force! AZ exclaimed as he jumped up, seemingly healed from his feign ailment. The excitement in his eyes mirrored the anticipation that had been building between them. Once we're given dinner, we can leave out the window and catch an elevator to the surface. Kaz approached the window, pushing it open to reveal the dimly lit streets of the 66th floor. AZ shuffled behind her, creating the illusion of occupied beds. With makeshift pillow bodies, the streets below began to quiet down, and Kaz envisioned the surface level as a place bathed in blinding light, a realm they had only heard stories about and seen in spotty holonet images. Time passed in a blur as they awaited dinner. The faulty tray mechanism launched the first tray onto the floor, but the second one arrived intact, allowing Kaz and AZ to split their meager rations. Despite the lack of nutritional value, they knew that they needed every bit of energy for the challenges that lay ahead. Kaz, I think everyone's asleep. AZ said with excitement in his tone. Kaz pressed her ear against the door, 
listening for any signs of movement throughout the orphanage. Satisfied that the coast was clear, she agreed, and both siblings turned towards the window, with a mix of nervousness and anticipation. Let's just get this over with, Kaz said reluctantly, walking towards the open window. The cool night air greeted her skin, and a slight breeze tousled her blonde hair. She felt Easy shuffling behind her, his nervous energy palpable. You don't have to do this, Kaz. I know you're nervous, but I think we can do this. The Jedi have been our heroes for as long as I can remember. They're gone now, Easy expressed, a tinge of sadness in his eye. We may not be real Jedi, but I think we can do anything we set our minds to. Kaz smiled at Daisy's words. Thanks, Daisy. But I don't have a choice. You're my brother. Who else will keep you from killing yourself? She teased, already knowing the answer. She hopped up on the windowsill, looking at Daisy with a larger smile. Well, Padawan Daisy, what are you waiting for? Daisy laughed. A genuine sound of camaraderie as he joined Kaz at the window. He felt a sense of belonging. A feeling he hadn't experienced since the day he met Kaz. She had seen him as a person. Not as a freak with strange abilities. As they stood on the precipice of their daring escape, AZ reveled in the trust and the bond they shared. Just waiting for you to realize how great this plan actually is, AZ said before jumping out of the window. Kaz rolled her eyes and followed suit. They ran towards the elevator that would take them to the surface, leaving behind the dimly lit 66th level. As the lift descended, passing each level with occasional switches, Kaz and AZ discussed their expectations for the surface. Wild ideas and vivid imaginations filled their conversation raging from teleporters to tube-like transportation systems inspired by their favorite cartoons. Little did they know, their journey was about to take an unexpected turn. The siblings arrived at one of the highest levels, and the elevator doors opened to reveal what was considered the surface, a dazzling expanse of light and activity. The bustling scene overwhelmed their senses, and Kaz and Aisy stepped onto the surface with wide-eyed wonder. It was a moment that marked the beginning of a journey that would challenge their perceptions and reshape their destinies. The upper levels were a sensory overload. The vibrant lights and the hum of activity surrounded them. Kaz and Aisy stood on the unfamiliar ground, absorbing the sights and sounds of the world they had only dreamed of. The towering structures and the constant flow of people left them in awe. AZ could not contain his excitement. Kaz, this is incredible! Look at all these lights! I'd never imagined it would be like this! Kaz grinned, sharing AZ's amazement. It's like a different universe up here. But we need to stay focused. The Jedi Temple is the goal. Navigating through the bustling crowd, they stuck to the shadows, blending into the diverse array of beings that populated the many levels. The stories that they heard and the images from the spotty holonet fueled their determination. The Jedi Temple stood as a symbol of hope, and they were determined to reach it. As they weaved through the illuminated streets and climbed the remaining levels of Coruscant, the siblings felt a mixture of excitement and trepidation. The surface was a place of both wonder and danger. They could not afford to be caught, especially with the daring plan they had in mind. After traversing a series of interconnected streets, they finally reached the entrance to the final lift that would take them to the upper levels, closer to the Jedi Temple. The lift's doors opened, revealing a relatively empty space. Kaz and AZ entered cautiously, their eyes darting about for any signs of surveillance. AZ couldn't contain his enthusiasm. Kaz, we're almost at the Jedi Temple! Can you believe it? Kaz nodded, 
the focus unwavering. Let's stay alert. We're not there yet, and we can't afford any slip-ups. The last thing we want is to be caught. The lift began its ascent. And as the doors closed, Kars and Aze exchanged a determined glance. The journey to the Jedi Temple had only just begun, and the challenges that awaited them were unknown. But in that moment, on the lift descending through the levels, they felt the weight of destiny on their shoulders, a destiny they were determined to shape.